if you look at Packers mock drafts, you would think offensive tackle is a major need. But is it? You are locked on Packers. Your daily Green Bay Packers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. You are Locked On Packers, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm Peter Bukowski, and I cover the Packers for The Leap, a newsletter I would love for you to subscribe to. You can follow me on Twitter, Peter underscore Bukowski. Follow the podcast on Twitter at Locked On Packers. Like us on Facebook. Subscribe to the podcast, iTunes, Spotify, Google Podcasts, wherever you find podcasts, you will find Locked On Packers. And anytime you want to hit us up on the Locked On Packers fan hotline, you can do that, 920-341-3775. Locked on Packers is the number one Packers podcast on the internet and the show for fans who know what happened. They want to know why and how. Thanks to everyone who makes Locked on Packers their first listen of the day. We hope you like starting your day with us as much as we like starting our day with you. A couple things draft related on our docket today. We're going to get in and get out of here as quickly as possible. It's Friday. Go enjoy the weather. If it's good by you, it's not really good in the Midwest at all. Unfortunately, a bunch of snow and rain. Go enjoy the the college basketball. Go enjoy the NBA. Lots of stuff that you can be. Go Just go have a beer. Just go enjoy time with family. I loved getting notes from people yesterday who responded to my, my uh, line about going and having a beer at a broad at Lambeau Field. Love that. There are apparently a lot of people. The Packers should think about doing this. I'll take some, uh, you know, a percentage of the royalties on that. Who would who would actually pay to do that? So uh, great, great marketing idea for the Packers if they want to do that. Let's start with the offensive line piece of this because I keep looking at these mock drafts and I keep I, I read, you know, a lot of Packers content, probably too much Packers content. I see a lot of it on Twitter. I hear a lot of it um, on on the airwaves. I see it on TV. It goes in my earballs. And I I go, what are people talking about when they say that the Packers have a need at offensive tackle? Because my assumption is Elton Jenkins is going to be the right tackle. His agent is want to get paid like a tackle. He played tackle. In fact, each of the last two years he's played tackle. He's played every position, guard, center, and tackle on the Packers offensive line over the last two years. If you can pay tackle, you deserve to get paid tackle money. Well, if the Packers are going to pay Elton Jenkins tackle money, and by the way, they should pay Elton Jenkins tackle money. He is a very good tackle. We saw it last year. He was a, a, a top 10 left tackle. He's a guard. He, he might be a center. Center might be his best position. And he was a top 10 left tackle. He can be a top five right tackle, a top three right tackle. And he can get paid like that. He can get Lane Johnson money. He can get Ryan Ramchek money. And that's where you maximize his value. So if Ellen, let's just assume that that's happening. I assume that's happening. I think you should assume that's happening. But let me tell you why I assume that's happening. This dovetails actually with our second topic coming up a little bit later. The Packers are really good about planning for the future. They know when contracts are coming up. Of course they do. But they draft to give themselves options. Not just, hey, we think this player is going to walk. It's more... Hey, if this player walks, if we decide in a year, in two years, that we can't keep this guy, we have a ready-made solution. A.J. Dillon was precisely that. It was two years in the future. Rashawn Gary was an eye to two years in the future. Now, Darnell Savage happened to be a we-need-it-now kind of pick. Every once in a while, you have to make those kinds of picks because rarely do you have a complete team. The Packers right now do not have a complete team unless they go out and trade for DK Metcalf and sign Will Fuller and Julio Jones. I I don't think you're going to feel like they have a complete team. There There are always going to be places where you can add to this team here and there, right? But the Packers have addressed over the last few years Interior offensive line. Elton Jenkins plays guard, not tackle. Josh Myers plays center, not tackle. Royce Newman was cross-trained, but they trained him to play guard, not tackle. Ended up starting at guard. Did that experiment go great? No. Right guard. John Runyon Jr., left guard. They haven't drafted a bunch of tackles. They haven't drafted a bunch of outside players. 
a bunch of guys who could play left or right tackle. Now, I have fans who say, but Peter, it could be David Bakhtiari. It actually could be the left tackle of the future that they need. They just gave David Bakhtiari that extension, 2020. A monster extension. And he is going to play on that extension probably through 2024, at least. Which means, yes, they could look at this and say, okay, it makes sense to get one of those guys now. But the need is not there. David Bakhtiari is going to play left tackle for you for three seasons. Not two, not one, probably three. So you don't need a left tackle. And if Elton Jenkins is playing right tackle, you don't need a right tackle. And and don't tell me about when Elton Jenkins is going to be healthy this season. Number one, we don't know. Number two, who cares? You're not going to use a first round pick or even a second round pick because you're worried about the eight games that Yash Nijman is going to have to play right tackle while Elton Jenkins comes back from an ACL injury and then becomes one of the best right tackles in football. It's just bad team management to go about it that way. And I don't think you're going to say, well, Yash can't play right tackle. No, he can. If he can handle left tackle and he can handle the pass rushers on the left-hand side, this is not 1984 where you need some monster brawler right tackle because all these quarterbacks are right-handed and you want to run right-handed run plays and that's where you put your, your brawler. Doesn't look like that anymore in the NFL. He can play right tackle. So they have David Bakhtiari, they have Elton Jenkins, and they have Yash Nijman. That is as good a one, two, three in terms of two starters and a swing as any team in football has. They're set there. You want to sign a veteran to give you some insurance. You want to bring back Dennis Kelly or something like that. You want to bring back Brian Bulaga, Iowa. 100%. That makes sense to do it that way, especially for next season, especially because those deals. The Rick Wagner deals, the Dennis Kelly deals, those have been one-year deals, one-year rentals. You don't cut Billy Turner to save not that much money because you don't have a right tackle. Elton Jenkins is the right tackle. Now, if you want to make the case that they still need an interior offensive lineman because Royce Newman is not it, fine. Fine. If the case is they actually just need offensive linemen, because they, they have a depth problem. I'm with you. They do. Cole Van Lannan, not a proven commodity. Jake Hansen, eh eh. Not it. These guys have not proven anything at the NFL level. So you can you can say, okay, that's where they could improve. But John Runyon Jr., I think, has been good. He was good, especially to end last season, but not so good that if Zion Johnson is there at 28, you pass. You could also move JRJ to right tack or right guard and have him compete with Royce Newman. Certainly something that could that could happen as well. If an offensive lineman is there who presents you a lot of value, or a stud a stud tackle falls and you go, okay, well, you could just keep Ellen Jenkins at left guard. I don't think that's plausible, but maybe you would do that. I think I, I think much better. You assume Elton Jenkins is going to move to right tackle. Yash is the swing tackle. And then you look in the middle rounds for a guard, a backup guard, because they really like Royce Newman. There's a reason he beat out two veterans for that job. They really like him. You hope in year two of the system, he gets his head in the playbook. He understands twists and stunts, because that was really one-on-one he could handle his blocks. And when he when it was him and and you know Josh Myers on duo blocks, they would they were moving bodies in the run game, which was something that we wondered about. In pass protection, he's got good feet. He can handle one-on-one. It's, who do I block if it's a TE stunt? How am I handling this blitz? That's the stuff. And those are rookie mistakes. That's the stuff that he doesn't quite have a handle on yet. And those are things that you just hope get better with time. But if you can get one of these guys, I mean, I think think Sean Ryan is one of those guys at UCLA. Played tackle. Could be a guard. I think he could be a really, really good guard. And they just hired the assistant offensive line coach at UCLA to be a QC in Green Bay. There are some connections to be made there. I really like that fit. I think he could be had in the second. And if you're going to use three picks and then get him at the end of the second round, 
because you've you've gotten a receiver, a safety, and a pass rusher, hey, go do it. Go do it. I think they have five that they can feel really, really good about. Yes, they could use some depth. Everyone could use some depth. The good news for them is once you figure out receiver, then you can you can start bumping offensive line up the up the list. But I think when you look at what could really impact your team, receiver, obviously, pass rusher on the edge, probably defensive line, and I think safety is something that all come before this depth building piece. Now, if a really good player can can fall to you and, and you have an opportunity to take him, great. Do it. Always do it. Always take the really good player if you have a chance to do that and they fall. We're talking about need, though. It's just not a need. Now, I mentioned safety. This is something that I think needs to be more broadly discussed. And we're going to discuss it right after this. Today's episode is really a fun one. And one of the reasons it is fun is we can talk about the NFL draft. But it's not as fun as college basketball at this time of year when you have four teams battling it out for a chance to go to the national title, a blue blood final four to determine the national title. Bet online is your number one source for all of your betting needs and sports info from the latest odds and contests to player props. You name it. Bet online remains the best spot for all of your sports and betting needs, not just basketball. Bet online is your continued source for sports wagering information needs on golf, on hockey. Baseball is going to be here before you know it. Plus, your favorite Las Vegas casino games. Head to the website or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends in action. Bet online where the game starts. And thanks for making Locked On Packers your first listen every day. Make sure you're following Locked On NFL, Locked On experts covering the biggest stories around the NFL every Monday through Friday in less than 30 minutes. It's free and available wherever you get podcasts. So I got this really good question from Gary Crook. On Twitter, And he said, hi, Peter, question for your draft shows. Given that rookies rarely, rarely do well in year one, how much should we be considering our needs in future years now? For example, next year we might lose both Adrian Amos and Darnell Savage. So should safety be a higher priority than it has been so far discussed? Gary from UK. Gary. Yes. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Now, they're not going to lose Darnell Savage. That's not quite how this works. Um, But they have to make a decision. They have to make a decision on what's going on with his future. And where he is going to be in his development for the Packers. That is not what we're here to discuss. In fact, we discussed that on a different show. But it is not a sure thing until he signs an extension. It's not a sure thing that he's going to be on this team, at least for now. They have they have a, a month, a little over a month to make a decision on this. And they have a future to consider. No question about it. Rashawn Gary, same deal. These fifth-year options are potent pieces that teams can use. If you're the Packers, you probably want to reduce the price for Rashawn Gary. And if, if it's Darnell Savage, you're probably okay with it, given the prices for safeties versus pass rushers, for example. But they've restructured Adrian Amos a couple times. They don't generally give third contracts to players who are not Packers Hall of Famers at the very least. Now, Adrian Amos might be that. I think he's probably borderline. If he had played his first four years in Green Bay instead of Chicago, it might even be a no-brainer, despite the fact that he has not been some sort of perennial all-pro, Pro Pro Bowl kind of player. He's been one of the steadiest players on this team since he arrived in Green Bay. He has been a leader and a a voice in that locker room. They don't have a deep bench at safety. In fact, they don't have a bench. They haven't even gone to the lumber store to purchase the wood and the nails and the lacquer or whatever else they're going to use the, the stain to make the bench. That's how far from having a bench they are. Then then you have to worry about the players sitting on the bench. They, they don't even have a bench. So, yes, to answer your question, Gary, and it is something that 
there this is a good safety class there isn't that Jamal Adams top 10 pick kind of player that is going to change your franchise and and some will argue that that is Kyle Hamilton from Notre Dame he ran 47 at his pro day which is just like it's not going to do it he ran 459 at the combine but it's probably like 465 given how fast all these times are at the combine so there's a lot of buzz right now he's going to fall out of the top certainly out of the top five probably out of the top 10 but then there's guys after that Jalen Petrie Juwan Brisker Daxton Hill guys that I think Green Bay could be interested in at the end of the first round 28 is a very interesting spot for me because on day two there could be some really good pass rushers there and you could have the chance to bring it now I I do also subscribe to the theory that if you want to get a pass rusher get him early Preston Smith could be not on this team in a year or two so get that guy in the first round I think a perfect first round for the Packers is get a receiver get a pass rusher that's probably the ideal first round for Green Bay we're going to talk about the ideal draft at some point over the next month as we get here um, toward the NFL draft you don't want to wait on day two there are some guys that that could be available we're going to talk about some of them in the coming days and weeks worst case scenario this year you need a nickel safety so you have to take someone. Now, if you want a nickel safety, you could go around three, four, five, and just say, okay, this guy's going to come in and compete. He's going to be safety three, and that's enough, and, and you're good to go. But when you add in this context about the future of this team, remember, this team drafts for the future. You do not want to draft a player for what they are in year one. That is how you make bad picks. You do not have Rashawn Gary if you draft him for what he is in year one. You do not have Devontae Adams for what he is if you draft him for what he is in year one. It's just because they would have waited until the fourth, fifth, sixth round. But if you understand what they can be and you correctly assess what they can be, now you have something. Most rookies are bad. Put it on my tombstone. You want someone who can come in and compete? Sure. In a perfect world. But it's more important what can they become? And for the Packers, what they can become in this case is probably someone that they need to start because even if they decide to pay Darnell Savage, and I think ultimately that is the path that they take, you probably don't have Adrian Amos. And if they extend Adrian Amos, it's going to be on a modest deal with void years and maybe it's a year or two. You need someone else. You need someone else. This is a this is a this is a first four picks kind of need for Green Bay. We're talking about need. This is a need need because they might have to start as soon as next year. And the Packers might need two as soon as next year. We don't know that for sure yet, but they may need two. So they're gonna have to go looking for one of these guys. And, you know, they were they were at the Penn State Pro Day, where, where Brisker was, he's one of those guys that I think could be a borderline first-round player. They could take a corner and convert him. That's something that they've done. Um, they've gone the other way with someone like Demarius Randall, free safety to corner. There's a lot of options here. Safety is a vital, a vital piece to this Joe Barry defense. It is essential. You need consistency, you need reliability, you need discipline because you're going to play a ton of light boxes, you got to fly downhill and you got to you got to fit the run. And you got to keep the umbrella on, open. You got to keep the lid on the opposing offense. You got to make sure you are deeper than the deepest when necessary. No big plays. This is it is core to what this defense wants to be. And so if you don't have more than two guys, not only are you light in terms of if you suffer one injury, you're in a tough spot, and the Packers have learned that over the last few years. When Darnell Savage goes down, they've had to play guys like Will Redmond and Henry Black who are just not it. And I don't understand, frankly, the the aversion that they have had to addressing what is a clear and obvious depth need. Now, I understand that there have been other places where 
they needed starters and you can allocate resources that way. But it's not as if they haven't also taken some luxury picks over the last couple of years. This team drafts with an eye to the future. And right now the future says the safety position is unclear about how who is going to be in this room beyond 2022. So you need to find a player. So as we sit here today, I think I think if the Packers had their druthers, their first round would go receiver. Well, I think they would they would trade a pick to get a receiver. That would be their perfect. But let's just say 22 you get Chris Olave. 28 you get a pass rusher. 53, you get a pass rusher, both like or, or you get a safety, and then you take best player available. And then I think after that, you can really go best player available because those are the three big spots for me. Get an interior offensive lineman if one falls to you. If not, hey, you got a linebacker you like, take him. You got a defensive lineman you like, take him. This is why I would love for them to, to use a draft pick to, tra- to trade for a receiver so you could draft a Travis Jones. You could get one of these beefed up defensive linemen to help your front. Or you could draft a safety in the first round. Daxton Hill from Michigan, who I love. Some teams think he's a corner. That's how good he is in coverage. That's how athletic he is. You love that. You love that. 438. 438 40. A nine relative athletic score. You really, really love to see it. All right, let's finish up with a discussion about where the Packers stand financially, everyone's favorite topic. Before we do, let's talk about our friends at Built Bar. I've been telling you a lot about Built Bar. Built Bar is the protein bar that tastes like a candy bar. I mentioned I took it on vacation. It's hard for me to give a better endorsement of any product than I took it with me on vacation. Some of my favorite products that I have at my house, I didn't bring with me. But I did bring Built Bars because they are that good. This is the protein bar that tastes like a candy bar. They've got a new Puffs line with protein-infused marshmallows. Yes, you heard me right. Protein-infused marshmallows. All of these things are covered in 100% chocolate. They're low-calorie. They're high in protein. They can replace the candy bar that you use, the the granola bar that you eat, the a cereal bar that you eat that does not have the same sort of nutritional value that's got way more sugar, that's got way more crap, frankly, in it than Built Bar does. And Built Bar tastes, in a lot of cases, I have to say, better. Better. A couple of the flavors of Built Bar are like not just as good, but better than almost any candy bar that you can get. I'm serious. If you don't believe me, go to Built.com and use promo code LOCKS15 to get 15% off your order and find out for yourself Promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off at Built.com. And thanks for making Locked On Packers your first listen every day. Now go make your second listen, Locked On NFL Draft. Ryan Tracy and former NFL cornerback Eric Crocker bring the NFL Draft to life every day with insight and analysis on college football prospects and NFL front offices. It's free and available wherever you get podcasts. So I've been getting a lot of questions about where the Packers stand with their financial situation and why haven't they used this money that they have? And it's not like they have some huge boatload of money, but they do. They, they now stand 17th in available salary cap space. They've got a little over $15 million to spend. They're going to need about half of that to sign their draft class. And it allows them to have a buffer to use the rest for in-season moves. Guys are going to get hurt. You have to be in a position to be nimble. And if someone's available, to go get them. If there's a Whitney Merciless on the market, to go get them. That's what you need to be able to do, especially in a season like this where you're all in for this year. You need that flexibility. Now, you want to clear some more space? Jay Alexander extension. You want to clear some more space? Rashawn Gary extension. You want to clear some more space? There, there, you you are going to need to make a move at some point. So where do you find that mechanism? How much of that of that buffer are you willing to eat into? But they also have time. They have time. They can restructure Dean Lowry's deal. And post June 1, it allows you to spread money out if you release a player or you trade a player, etc. 
That also could work to the Packers' favor where they could get a deal for someone like Tyler Lockett whose money makes it prohibitive for him to be traded now, but in two months, it looks like a horse of a different color. It's not like they're suddenly flush with all of this money to go spend. They need this money. But the fact that they have this money now means they're just one move away from having enough money to do another thing. And they're one move away from having enough money to do another thing. And so on and so forth. And so it, it's not like they're in some hugely advantageous position now, but, you know, uh, phase two, phase three, wave, wave two, wave three, whatever you want to call it, of free agency, this is when you get the bargains. This is where you get that one year, $3 million. I mean, John Reed, Bill Huber pointed this out uh, yesterday in his piece on on the Packers offseason, starting level defensive tackles in this market, not even high, super high levels, went for six, seven, eight million dollars a year. And they got John Reed for a fraction of that, for half that, less than half that. Uh, and so that's a really good deal. You're looking for those deals now and, and you can get creative in the way that you use them. Maybe you can only use a million or two million or three million dollars. And you can get a seven, eight million dollar player just because of the way you structure the deal. They're not, they don't have to be in a rush. They are gonna need some of this money, but they have more that they can use. Plus, they have the opportunity to in in June be a little bit more aggressive. Plus, they're gonna need some of that buffer. So, you know, you could use some of the buffer now if you wanted to. And then if you need other monies in the future go through the machinations to do that. So that is that is something that, you know, we, we can we can keep an eye on. If there is a a Jair Alexander extension, for example, how much money does that free up and why? Why are they using that? Why are they using that money? How are they using that money? I think those are questions that we have to be thinking about when we get this kind of news. All right, next week, the draft in earnest. We're going to have draft ga- draft guests on every week. Moving forward, um, a lot of draft content to get to, and we we now have a clear picture of what this team looks like at the moment. Uh, and and I think this this episode is going a long way into helping us elucidate some of that stuff. So it, it helps us get a clear picture of how we stack the needs for Green Bay moving forward. Follow me on Twitter, Peter underscore Bukowski. Follow the podcast on Twitter, Locked On Packers. Like us on Facebook. Subscribe to the podcast, iTunes, Spotify. Google Podcasts, wherever you find podcasts, you will find Locked on Packers. And anytime you want to hit us up on the Locked on Packers fan hotline, you can do that 920-341-3775 to stay Locked on Packers.